Hello and welcome back to Rose Field for the second playoff series of the year between the Arctic Altitude and Pacific Panthers. Yeah, today my roster will be myself and Soren Etheridge. Unfortunately, Aiden Savion was not able to make it today. And as for the altitude, they're going to have their main three, Evan Land, Joey Jankowski, and Braden Lewis. Uh, we'll see if Jackson Lewis gets mixed in there, but it's looking unlikely. And our keys to the game today will just be hitting, uh, because all season we've struggled, but last series against the altitude that we played, uh, we really picked it up and obviously had four home runs in our best hitting series of the year. Yeah, and in that series, uh, the Panthers dominated. We'll see if it's the same case today, but for the altitude, some keys are gonna include Evan's accuracy, you saw him struggle lately, and if he could keep up that great hitting from the last performance against my team, where he had who knows how many home runs, it was a bunch. So yeah, with that, let's go down to the field for some player interviews. I'm with Soren Etheridge of the Pacific Panthers. You haven't allowed a run all season. How's that gonna keep up today? And how are you gonna keep just hitting against the altitude like you did earlier this season? Uh, Evan's pitching sucks, so I think I'll keep doing what I've been doing against that. And for pitching, I'm just gonna keep mixing it up even more. All right. I'm here with Carson Rose of the Pacific Panthers in a best of three series in postseason in big league wiffle ball history. Uh, only 14% of teams win the series after losing game one. Uh, so it obviously shows how important game one is. How are you gonna come out early, come out hot, you know, attack early today? Yeah, I mean, obviously getting that game one win is a huge uh, victory in this league and league's history. Uh, so we're gonna try to just get some hits early and stuff, pitching, uh, make sure we lights out from pitching, make sure we don't walk people in, make stupid mistakes. But obviously there is that 14%, and I believe that was us against the Cougars in 2020. So we're not gonna be, we know that if we lose game one, series is not over, we've done it before, we'll do it again. All right, game one, let's go. Welcome to Rose Field on a sweaty August afternoon in a playoff series between the Arctic Altitude, who have never before won a playoff game facing off against the Pacific Panthers. The Panthers dominated the altitude in a late game series, sweeping it. Will it be the same story today? Soren Etheridge at the plate, down he goes on a nasty sinker from land. Best two out of three series. And down goes Rose. Good pitching from Land. We go to the bottom of the first. All square at zero. Land leading off. And down he goes again, talking to himself. Great location from the right-hander. Oh my, that's a new pitch from Rose. Got Jankowski looking. Downstairs, and we have the first base runner in the game, top of the second for the Panthers. Full count now, Jankowski in left. Upstairs, first and second, dangerous moment for the altitude. Wings it ball forward, a great pitch from Land. Swept across the zone. Ball four, they are loaded up. And with Carson Rose on the mound, any run matters. This is why you tune in to Big League Wiffle Ball right here. Bases juiced, full count, two outs, game one of the playoffs. Oh, and he swings at ball four. Land does it again, clutches up. A lost opportunity for the Panthers. What a moment. Sort of tough pitches Lewis is looking at. Down he goes again, took a little off that. Rose has been incredibly efficient. Three outs on seven pitches. Two, two, two outs. Oh my. Literally 10 pitches in two innings. Great performance so far from Rose. 
Rose has been disciplined at the plate so far. Full count. Ball four. Oh, is that fair foul? Just foul. Game of inches, proven again right there. We saw that from Luke Rose against the Western Wolves drift foul. Almost identical to what happened to Rose that ended up costing him the series. I shivered his fingers. Full count now. Up high. We've seen this show before. Just last inning. First and second, one out. Here we go, 2-2. Two, two. Unbelievable location. That's two outs. Great movement. Controlled the sinker that time. Oh, right up the middle. Belin with an incredible play. Unbelievable break for the altitude on a bullet from Etheridge. Out at first. That was luck for the altitude because that was going into the bushes that was a double that was probably the game right there if it wouldn't have hit land full count now rose's first of the day and he goes to the pitch rose continues throwing a perfect game so far we go to the top of the fourth extras and we'll start with a man on second Four. Pitch count high for land. Oh, just missed by literally a sixteenth of an inch. Full count. Oh, and he fouls it into the zone. That's strike three. Good swing by Rose. Plan gets out of the jam, at least for now. Jinkowski and Lewis rooting on their teammate here at a critical moment. It's almost like a chess match. Talking, then talking. That says a lot, but. Etheridge at the plate. Here we go. Who wants to be a hero? Ball four, a big moment in the game. 1-0, Panthers, full count, two outs. And that's the second run. What was Etheridge looking at? Down go the Panthers, but not without scoring two. We go to the bottom of the fourth, Wait, he's up. He's up. with the Panthers leading two to nothing. Oh. And that's the second out of the game. Right on the camera. And that's it for the altitude. Carson Rose throws a perfect game in game one to get the Panthers out to a strong start as they capture game one, two to nothing. It'll be up to the altitude to stay alive in game two. Here we go. Game two in this battle to go to the big league wiffle ball semifinals between the Pacific Panthers and the Arctic altitude. Despite Carson Rose throwing a perfect game in game one, they make a curious strategic decision despite Etheridge's great ERA in the regular season, going to the lanky right-hander to start game two. The Altitude have their first base runner of the series. 0-2. Oh, Down goes Jinkowski. Land remains on first. 0-2 oh, to Lewis. Looking to get on track here in the series. And that's it. Great location from Etheridge. 
We go to the bottom of the first. All tied at zero. Great pitch. Not sure how Etheridge laid off that one. Ball four. Two walks. And that's it. Etheridge speaks up but strikes out. Down he goes on a great pitch from Land. Took a little something off that with superb location. Dissension with the Panthers. Soren going all Robert Ory with his teammates in right field. Death Rich and right. First walk. Oh. Jankowski on first land. Down he goes on great location from Rose. Two outs. Two runners on. He goes around. Good job by Etheridge. Draws the walk. And here we are again. A full count. Land comes through as he has quite often in this series. Nicks the inside zone. Down goes Rose. 1-1. One, one, two outs. Rose on first. And that's it for Jankowski on a ball that had massive inside movement. We go to the bottom of the third, and only one team can win. One out. And that's it for Rose. Oh, and Etheridge puts it in play. Lewis makes another. Out at first. Good job by Lewis being alert. We go to the top of the fourth when a runner starts on second base. Down goes Land on the slider. Down he goes. The Panthers capture the series on a great hit from Carson Rose. They move on to face the Eastern Extreme in what will be a dramatic series. Each game during the regular season was decided by one run. 1-0, 1-0, 1-0. Congratulations to the Altitude on a great season. We'll see you soon for the Panthers versus the Extreme. I'm here with the Pacific Panthers. You guys just moved on to the semifinals. You're gonna face the Eastern Extreme. Uh, what are your first thoughts on that, reactions? Uh, I mean, I'm just happy because Adam and I will get contact with the ball all day. And uh, when it mattered, I did. And against the Extreme, I'm looking forward to it. We've got some beef there. And it was a good series last time. It was, I think we lost 1-0 every time, so it should be a good series. Yeah, Soren, you especially have some, uh, you could call it unfinished business with the extreme. Uh, looking forward to that. What do you got to say to Brody, Zach, Reed, all of them? Is the pocket radar on? First of all, Reed's the one-hit wonder. And then I'm um, pretty excited to hit off Brody because pitches are flat. And I think there's going to be a lot of action hitting-wise in that series. Yeah, one of the better uh, rivalries you could say in this league. And we'll see it in a couple of weeks here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. All right, hello and welcome to another postseason preview show. 
I'm Logan Rose. That's Carson Rose and Brody Livingston who are joining me. And uh, we're going to be previewing the two semifinal series coming up to close out this season. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed Panthers Altitude. This is obviously coming after that. There's another great series to round off the first round of games. And those were just super competitive. But it only gets better from here. So we're going to start with the uh, Wolves Diamonds, which will be the next one on YouTube. Uh, the Wolves will have all five guys, myself, Bryson, Chase, Jake Tucker, and Dylan Grossman. And the Diamonds are going to have uh, Seth Denmark, Matthew Saba, and Declan Sabian. So, uh, Carson, I'm going to start with you going into this series. Like, what were your – obviously, it's already been played, but what were your um, predictions and, like, keys to the game for, you know, each team? Uh, so, yeah, obviously, Diamonds uh, finished the season as the one seed. So, I would definitely take the Diamonds. You guys were the sixth seed. Taking the Diamonds in probably two games, I'm going to say. Um they just, I think they have better pitching and hitting. Uh, but the keys I'm thinking for the Wolves is they just need to, they have good hitting, keep that up. Um, but their pitching needs to be good. Logan and Bryson uh, need to pitch much better than they did against the altitude. Pitched okay against the Cougars. Um, but I think pitching is going to be the um, main factor in this series. And then for the uh, Diamonds, I think they're going to need some help other than Seth since Seth's like their entire team. Matthew needs to step up, and uh, Declan, I think, played. Uh, I'll need to play well. I mean, I would call zero runs pretty good pitching, but, you know, you could say what you want. Uh, we did get lucky, though, with a lot. There were a lot of runners on base. Like, our, I think my whip, because I was the only guy who pitched in the series, was above one. Um, but, yeah, there was a lot of guys on base. We got out of a lot of jams. Luke got some unlucky breaks. Um, but like I, I mean, that series was incredible. Um, and yeah, everyone just played their heart out in that. But yeah, moving on, Brody, same question to you. Keys to the game and your prediction. Um, all right, so keys to the game. I mean, it's Seth basically versus the Wolves. Um, I think Seth is just going to continue to tear it up. I mean, it's Seth, right? Like, I mean, he's got like six or seven pitches and they all move differently and they're all really gross and it takes a long time to adapt to them. So I'm going to go ahead and say diamonds and two, but I think it'll be a lot closer than people think just because I think the wolves have really good hitters um, with Bryson and, and you um, and then chase just an on base machine. So I just, I think that I think it'll be a lot closer, but I still think diamonds will win in two. Yeah. And I mean, as I was preparing for this series, I look back at the, regular season video where we got swept and honestly I thought we got just smoked but like I looked at it and I think there's one game obviously the Barrett home run won that game uh that probably won't happen in the playoffs I don't think we're gonna be like you know throwing that slow like the adrenaline's pumping us up and then we go to uh the next game and there was another it was the Barrett off my head as I was running home and then I think they got a break and then the other game in game one I was also running home, and they barely threw me out. Um, so I, I forgot how close the games were in the regular season. But, yeah, it should be a a fun one for sure. We'll see if, you know, we make it back to our third straight World Series or the Diamonds can make it to their first. It would definitely be a fun either way. But uh, moving on, we got Panthers Extreme. I don't know if you guys could tell in the regular season, but these teams are – Honestly, it's probably our biggest rivalry now. Panthers Cougars like is kind of like the hyped up rivalry, but like just after the season and in between games, you can specifically between Brody and Soren. Uh, they're not honestly it's a very up and down relationship. It'd be fun to make like a documentary on almost. We could do a little skit. Who knows? But it'd be it's a fun it's a fun one to for sure. And Soren, if you guys can't tell, obviously probably talks the most smack in the league. Um, he's a fun character, not when you're on the opposing team, but like he's kind of like the uh, Patrick Beverly of big league West football, if that makes sense for the basketball fans. So, Brody, from your side, what's your like relationship with Soren and going into the series? Like, just what what are you thinking with? How are you going to deal with the smack talk and all of that? All right. Well, okay. So relationship wise. So since like spring training, I knew that he was to be a problem. So 
you know, and I've played with I've played with Bryce and obviously my brother Evan, like best friend Seth, known him since I was like seven. And we've like talked about it just so much. Like we're just like we we at like like outside of the league, we dislike him. Like like he's I don't know. He's just like I don't know, he just talks a lot. I don't think he's that good. I think he's I think he's all right. I don't think he's he's not he's definitely not the worst player in the league, but I just don't think that he's you know better than any of the four guys who play on or have played with me. But that's just my opinion. But uh I I will say he he did have a pretty good second half right after the all-star break. He uh he started popping off. Um but I don't first series, I mean he he talked a little bit, kind of shut him up. I mean I struck him out probably 17 times or something like that. But um I don't know. I think sometimes it gets hard because he'll he'll say some stuff and it's it gets in your head sometimes. But I'm gonna try and not not let him get in my head at all. Yeah, I know it was mentioned at the end of the Panthers altitude series. You when you guys played in the regular season, there were hundreds of strikeouts. It was one oh one oh one oh deep games. And honestly, we're expecting the same thing between you and Carson. You guys are pretty much the best pitchers in the league. Uh in terms of hard to hit off of. Like Seth's a great pitcher, but I feel like you can Seth's a different kind of pitcher. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, you guys are definitely the most dominant. Carson, you know, you're on the other half of this rivalry. You guys kind of play the uh villains big league wiffle ball for a while now. Soren, he joins in on your team, and it becomes a little more uh a little more real. He's a probably the best smack talker. And all of wiffle ball, in my opinion, so that I've seen. So, um, you know, from your perspective, what's your approach to this series? Obviously, it's just going to be about timely hitting, as you saw in the regular season. And uh, if you can come through and get some hits, like you, I mean, failed to do so in the regular season. Yeah, like Brody said, uh, my team, well, he said Soren, but I think our whole team's really picked it up since the All Star break. We had a nice refresher reset there uh we're four and two since then trying to keep our no seven and two counting the altitude or six and two counting the altitude series um so we're just going to try to keep that up soren and me hopefully can keep up good pitching obviously soren's not allowed to run kind of difficult to lose when you don't allow a run um <laughs> we didn't allow one series either um but the whole goal here just shut out uh Brody and make the other two work because Brody's obviously their best player. And if they don't score or Brody's, they need Brody to be hitting and pitching. Um, and also, also before the last series, I did scuff a new ball. And since then I've not allowed a hit or Soren. We've not allowed run. So we're going to try to keep that up with special balls. <laughs> yeah. As for the rosters, the Panthers are going to have Carson, Soren, Aiden. Uh, once again, is injured. He's likely going to be out uh, if the Panthers make it past there uh, just for the rest of the playoffs. But uh, for the extreme, they have Brody, Zach Koss, and Reed. They got their three guys. Um, and, yeah, it's going to be fun for sure. Um, you mentioned just how, how well you guys have played. But um, in that altitude series, there was some uh, – like I don't know if people could tell from watching it, but there was some – like dispute between you and Soren when you took him out um, yeah. of the game. So how's that pitching situation going to work? Yeah, I think I'm probably, I'm, I'm the starter, obviously. Soren's going to be there if I need him. Um, but Soren's, Soren's kind of got a temper a little bit. He's a little angry. You know, he's watching this, but he gets a little angry if he doesn't pitch. Um, so I think that's kind of helped our team because he focuses more at the plate when he pitches because I don't know, he just gets bored otherwise. So I think the plan might be start him game two. Um, I don't know how game one will go, but if we win game one, I'll definitely start him game two. If not, I'll have to make a decision, but I think the game, it'll be one at the plate. Obviously we need to pick it up at the plate. Our pitching has been great all year, but I think, yeah, obviously we haven't been able to score except for that altitude series. Yeah. Uh, if there was a stat for how he plays hitting wise versus like when he's pitching versus when he's not pitching, it would definitely be a dramatic difference. He seems to be a lot more locked in, but yeah, uh, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching the video. Any last thoughts for you two? 
uh, heading down the stretch. All right, look out rec- the rest of the regular season. It honestly, or sorry, the postseason honestly only gets better. Um, and if you thought, I mean, Wolves Cougars is pretty good. Panthers altitude is pretty good, but these series are extremely intense. If you can't tell from the video, so uh, yeah, we'll see you next week for Wolves Diamonds.